Welcome to another Forge Hub video. This is Psychoduck, and today I am here to talk about another one of the BTB maps from the Battle of Shadow and Light update which recently launched for Halo 5 Guardians. In this video I'll be covering Guillotine, which was a collaboration between the guys at 343 Industries and myself. I'll be communicating my original vision for the level and assessing how the current version stacks up against it and I will also go over some of the new Forge items and capabilities that this map showcases. There were two primary reasons I chose to remake Headlong for this project. Firstly, the vertical nature of the map and the mix of engagement ranges were sure to be a good fit for Halo 5's mechanics and sandbox with the right adjustments. Second, I wanted to see how far I could push the new Forge tools and recreating a complex and detailed level like Headlong was the perfect opportunity. There were two main design goals which I set out to achieve with Guillotine. Firstly, I wanted to ensure that the scaling was a good fit for Halo 5. I intentionally avoided a one-to-one -one remake and instead scaled each area independently to optimize each jump and line of sight for this game. This was a real challenge given our limited timetable and the fact that this was done well before the game came out. I was learning the new mechanics and was trying to design a map around them at the same time. Luckily I was able to quickly iterate on the map scale with relative ease thanks to the multi-select and grouping functionality. I also had the benefit of getting feedback from pro players and others who had a mastery of the game's mechanics. This allowed me to work in some exciting new jumps as well. My second main goal was to improve Headlong's Warthog gameplay. The vehicle routes on the original were somewhat convoluted and did not provide enough opportunities for ground vehicles to participate in the vertical gameplay enjoyed by infantry on the map. The somewhat convoluted nature of the original circuit was born out of a need to balance travel times and prevent runaway flag caps in one flag CTF. I wanted to preserve the travel time balance in the hopes of one flag CTF one day making its way to Halo 5, but I still wanted to add some additional options for the Hawks. My solution was to reorient the hanging basket and allow vehicles to drive up to the broken bridge landing, jump through the basket, and land behind Blue Base. This movement option involved a lot of airtime for Hogs, adding some risk to balance its relatively short travel time. I also made a few adjustments to the natural terrain in the bottom of the map to make it more drivable. To get the most out of these new vehicle options, I replaced the asymmetrical vehicle set of the original with a symmetrical one which included hogs and ghosts at the bases and a neutral banshee. At the end of my time at the studio, I was confident that I had executed on both of my design goals quite well. Playtests proved to be faster paced than games on the original ever were thanks to the new movement options. Scaling felt natural, and vehicle play was exciting. The Banshee was extremely powerful during early playtests due to shortcomings of my original weapon set. There were two parts of the map which I wasn't entirely pleased with when I left. Soda Room and the Monument platform each felt somewhat dumbed down because of time constraints. The lifts and a few other details were less than optimal when I left as well. Once I passed the map off to 343, several changes were made. The weapon set was reworked to better balance the Banshee and to foster better engagements all around. I'm particularly happy with the placement of rockets in Beam Rifle Room, which is now called the Armory, as they allow for exciting pushes into construction build. The sniper is as deadly as ever, but is placed on an exposed catwalk on the low side of the map, just like on the original. The monument platform was reworked, though it still lacks some of the detail and versatility of the position on the original. The camo room, now called cargo, has also been closed off from a few lines of sight. Sadly, the vehicle set has been reworked, removing hogs altogether and placing a mantis at the foot of the office building. I find this change disappointing given that one of my primary design goals was to improve Warthog gameplay on the map. The Mantis lacks potential for vertical gameplay, which is, again, at odds with my design goal for vehicle gameplay. I'll be interested to see what the consensus is in regards to this new vehicle set as more and more players experience the map. The biggest changes to Guillotine after the handoff were visual. 
343 repurposed and built several assets to populate the map, including cranes, vending machines, billboards, and the space Prius. The Warthog billboard looks excellent, and the ring of space whales at the monument is simply spectacular. The detail is spread a bit thin in places due to the sheer size and complexity of the map, but the team did an incredible job of livening up the level with these details. They also created some great looking facades to make the buildings look more believable. The art pass this map went through completely exceeded my expectations, and I can't wait to see how some of these assets are used once Forge is released. Guillotine houses a questionable vehicle set and sports a few areas which are still rough around the edges, but still provides an excellent BTB experience overall. The map really is a testament to the power of Halo 5's Forge. I'd love to hear about your experiences with this reimagining of the classic headlong in the BTB feedback thread on Forge Hub. Stay tuned for more coverage of these maps and Halo 5's Forge, and I'll see you next time. Thanks for watching.